the love and attention really was just supply to the narcissist. And what do people do with supplies, right? Like at work for me, when we get supplies, we use them. We use them. Needles, syringes, gauze, tape, gloves, and everything that is needed on our unit. And when those supplies are shipped in and we receive those supplies, we use them. And that's just what the narcissist does to the abused one. They don't receive love and attention. They use that to their advantage and to the disadvantage of the abused one. But again, it is a new day, a brand new day, right? Hello, beautiful ones, beautiful and blessed ones. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Latanya, and welcome to you as well. Well, before I say anything else, I want to take this moment to say thank you to all of my subscribers and even to those of you who simply view my videos in general. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much, okay? So having said that, being a survivor and thriver after enduring the hell of narcissistic abuse, I am so passionate about my purpose to support and serve others who are currently on a path of their healing journey right now. Okay, so I was trying to think like, how is it that I can begin? Right. Those of us who have endured narcissistic abuse know and have learned through experience that that process, that time period, right after that abuse is over, when you're fresh out, it's a grueling and challenging time. I mean, that head space is like no other. And you're angry, you're upset, you're sad. I mean, the mixture of emotions, it's an uphill battle. It really is. And as grueling as that process is, and as many components that it entails, one of the ones that I struggled with the most, and that was being fixated, you know, on the thoughts of all that I had endured with that individual. Let me just pose a few questions, right? Do you find it extremely difficult to let go of the thoughts that play over and over in your mind about how the narcissist lied to you, how they betrayed you and how they, you know, just the whole situation ship, right? It was a hellish ordeal. And oftentimes you even think about the guilt you feel guilty for allowing yourself to even remain in that space for as long as you did. You're left to heal your own wounds. And oftentimes you really don't feel that you have anyone else that you can confide in that understands. And so this is one of the reasons that I'm so passionate about being here for you. If you are someone who was in that space right now. Uh, I was left feeling worthless, helpless, not good enough, like I didn't measure up. I felt alone and I was angry. I was so angry. And I wanted to, if I'm honest, I wanted to get back at the narcissist, not get back with the narcissist. No, no, I wanted to get back at the narcissist for what all they did to me and what I allowed to transpire because again, I was a willing participant, I was present. And so that led me to feeling guilty 
you know, and upset even not only with the narcissist, but with myself. I had to forgive myself. And so having said all of that, if you're someone who is currently finding that you're having extreme difficulties letting go of the thoughts of all that the narcissist did to you, I mean, it's understandable. It is normal. It is common for you to have gone through all of that and you're thinking about it, you're dwelling on it, you know? And it's like, you can think of nothing else but that. And it's really taken over. And what a lot of people fail to realize and understand, especially those who have not walked in those shoes, they don't really understand that the pain doesn't end when the relationship does. Many times it's a total different type of pain because you're left to heal your own wounds. And you feel alone, sad, angry, infuriated, worthless, helpless, clueless even. And the anger piece, right? And so what I want to do today is cover some simple yet top tier strategies that'll help you to rediscover you, to regain your confidence to reclaim your power and to shut those recurring thoughts of the narcissist and their dirty work down for good. First things first, right? Acknowledging your feelings. It is common. It is totally normal. In fact, it's healthy to allow yourself to feel what you're feeling. In this way, you're not suppressing your emotions. You're allowing nature to take its course. And it is at this point that it's imperative to remember self-control because oftentimes you want to retaliate so badly that you go out and do something that isn't worth doing because it'll land you in trouble and you won't be able to enjoy what lies ahead for you because there is something much greater up ahead. It's just going through the motions. It's just not even just going through the motions, but going through the process in a healthy way. And it's not a cookie cutter process. It's not one size fits all. The length of time that it takes, it varies from person to person. Acknowledging your feelings and allowing yourself to process that mixture of emotions. And then the curiosity in terms of stalking, like their social media, for instance, that's unhealthy. It doesn't really do any good whatsoever. In fact, it really only makes matters worse. And that's because what we learned, right, is that the narcissist was putting on a facade the whole time. So when you see them on social media, with their new source of narcissistic supply, that's a facade as well. And so when you see them posting how good, you know, life is and how good they're feeling and how great, you know, blah, blah, and blah, it's counterproductive to the healing process. It's counterproductive on the path of healing. And the goal is to completely obliterate the thoughts of the narcissist. So stalking their social media or asking mutual friends about them, it's, it's not going to help. It only hinders your growth. It only hinders your progress. They meant us no good at the time that we were together. And so Looking at them from afar, it's just, like I said, a hindrance. That's all it is. Shifting your focus. Shift your focus inward in your direction. Shift it inward to you. For you. Because at this time, it's really not about anyone else. It's about you and your health 
It's about you and your healing. It's time to prioritize your self-care. It's mandatory. You may have heard this, and this is true, that self-care is not selfish. It's essential. It's all about you now. It's all about you. Because at the time that you were with the narcissist, and I can say this from experience, at the time that I was with the narcissist, it wasn't about me. It was about what I could do for the narcissist. I didn't matter. My feelings didn't matter. I did not matter at all. It was all about the narcissist. Well, no, it's all about you now. Start engaging in activities that bring you happiness, that bring you joy. Engage in some activities that will make your heart and your soul happy. That will make your heart and your soul smile. See, at the time that the abused one is with the narcissist, there is no room, there is no space, there is no time. There is not even an opportunity for the abused one to consider themselves. Because at that time, they're so busy attempting to please the narcissist in every way imaginable. And so all of the energy, you know, all of the positivity, all of the optimism and all of the joy was drained out of the abused one by the narcissist. We won't even get into that because this right here is what about you. It's about moving forward, moving on, moving upward, right? And elevating and getting back to you, rediscovering you, not the narcissist. But I can't help but to include some examples of just how demented and dirty that the narcissist was and how much damage they do. Create a playlist, dance, sing, dance like nobody is watching, dance like somebody is watching, just dance. When you intentionally give yourself the love and the attention that you so vehemently and solely and relentlessly gave to the narcissist or supplied rather to the narcissist, when you give all of that poured into you, you'd be amazed at the outcome. And it gets better and better and better and greater and greater than you would have ever thought that it would. And it goes on and on and on. It really does. It really gets better. Okay? So also get with some friends, maybe set a date, go out for brunch or a movie and dinner with some of your girlfriends and just kind of hang out. But you may or may not be ready for that. Baby steps are fine. And let me say this on that note, celebrating the small wins, celebrating each step that you take, that's a victory. And it's okay to celebrate that. It's okay to pat yourself on the back because when you think about it, anything that you set out to do, any endeavors that you had, the narcissist knocked it down. I know for me, that's how it was. Any good ideas I had, something that excited me and I wanted to do or get, the narcissist would just knock it down, you know? And it was just like on me to have accepted all of that. But I did, you know, that was then, this is now, you know, so it's all good. You know, I was not able to have this type of conversation with you that I'm having right now. At the time that I was with the narcissist, I wasn't able to speak like this. Why? It was because I did not genuinely feel this way. It was because I was walking in a different pair of shoes. It was because I was walking down a different road. And that was a road of destruction, unfortunately. And that's just what the truth is. You can also laugh, laugh, you know, 
find a good comedy movie or stand-up comedy show or get tickets to a comedy show and go, you know, you can do that. That's something that you and your friends can do as well. But if you're not yet ready for that and you're in a space where, hey, you want to spend some time alone, you know, not alone being lonely because there is a difference, but you're not ready to step out like that. If that's the case, that's fine. Just find something on TV, some videos that will make you laugh because laughter does good like a medicine. Laughter does good like a medicine. And being with the narcissist at that time, there was rarely any laughing. It was more so sadness. It was more so tears. It was. It was more so arguing and defending myself. It was. It was more so walking on eggshells. There wasn't a lot of laughter. It was rare. It was rare. So laugh. You now have that opportunity to laugh with intent. You know, like, for instance, I'm going to find a comedy to watch so that I can laugh. You know, I want to laugh right now. And so you can do that. You have that as an option. Okay, so another one is to practice mindfulness. Practice mindfulness. This is one of my favorite strategies right here. Now get this. When you go to sleep at night, right? Usually... For the most part, you get up, get in the shower, do this, you do that, and you're just going, 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 right? Lay there, say a prayer, meditate. It doesn't take long. You can lie there and just breathe. Inhale, exhale. And just lay there and watch the rise and the fall of your chest with each breath. Right? And be mindful of what's taking place. Life. Right? Breath. And where there is life, there is hope. And when you see and take a moment to actually take in what's happening, you think about the fact that your lungs are expanding within you. They're expanding, right? And contracting, you know? Your heart is beating. These are some of the things that we tend to take for granted on a regular basis. I mean, because we have things we've got to do, people to see, work to do. And there are certain times throughout the day that we can stop, take a moment, and appreciate that moment and what is happening in that moment. Gratitude. Gratitude is linked, is a direct link to joy. And so when you can sit and take a moment to take in those precious moments, they'll even bring you joy. It's the simple things. And that is why I said in the beginning, these are simple yet top tier because what makes them top tier is that they bring joy, bring joy. And it's truly organic. It's nothing extravagant happening, right? It's not extravagant, but it's amazing at the same time when you really give thought and consideration to what it is you're being mindful of at that time. Another simple yet top tier strategy is a nature retreat. Go for a walk. And even if you're not going for a long walk, you can even sit on your porch or your patio or balcony or your deck and just gaze at the wind 
as it softly blows through the leaves on the tree and take in the beauty of God's creation. Look at the flowers, beautiful, colorful, vibrant flowers. When we take in the creations of God, it's serene, it's calming, and it is directly linked to joy. I would be remiss if I did not mention reading your Bible or pray. Whichever the Spirit leads you to do, that's a direct link to joy. Okay, and as I get ready to wrap this video up, I just want to add and remind you that you're not defined by your past history and your worth is not determined, nor is it diminished by the actions of the abuser against you. And I'm so glad you watched this video. And I say that because your journey towards healing is a testament to your tenacity. You will come back from this even stronger than you were before it took place. It's a testament also to your courage and your comeback. Your bounce back game is so strong. It's just that all the residue and the debris from the damage that the narcissist induced, it causes such a dark and dense brain fog that it causes you to lose sight of your own value. It happened to me. You're not alone in this. It happened to me. The damage is so detrimental that it blocks you from even seeing how precious and valuable you truly are. And not only how precious and valuable you are now, but it blocks you from seeing how precious and valuable you were even before you ever crossed paths with the narcissist to begin with. But it's a new day. It's a brand new day, right? Because as I mentioned earlier, the more love and attention that you give yourself and that you gift to yourself, the less you'll even think about the narcissist. And as unfortunate as it is and as unfortunate as it was for me at that time, the love and attention really was just supply to the narcissist. And what do people do with supplies, right? Like at work for me, when we get supplies, we use them. We use them. Needles, syringes, um, gauze, tape gloves, and everything that is needed on our unit. And when those supplies are shipped in and we receive those supplies, we use them. And that's just what the narcissist does to the abused one. They don't receive love and attention. They use that to their advantage and to the disadvantage of the abused one. But again, it is a new day, a brand new day, right? So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Listen, I love you. And uh, yeah, so it's going to be just fine. Um, if you feel that this has helped you in any way, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see you on the next one. All right. Remember, Jesus is love and compassion is boss.